everyone. Um, it's been a while since I've been on live and I apologize. I've just been really busy in a good way and doing a lot of fun stuff. And this morning I was reading in the book of Job and in, in the book of Job you rarely think of there being things that are like encouraging and fun. And so I wanted to read this to you. Um, so it's actually um, one of his friends is responding to Job's complaints and it says, if you devote your heart to him and stretch out your hands to him, if you put away the sin that is in your hand and allow no evil to dwell in your tent, then you will lift up your face without shame. You will stand firm and without fear. You will surely forget your trouble, recalling it only as waters gone by. Life will be brighter than noonday and darkness will become like morning. You will be secure because there is hope. You will look about you and take your rest in safety. You will lie down and no one to make you afraid, and many will court your favor. And I was, I was just thinking about how um, when I'm doing my life coaching and the different clients that I have, and we were talking about how um, when you're doing well, people are drawn to you. When the the joy of the Lord is with you, Good morning Sue, hi Laurie. Um, when you're embracing the truth of God and living in the truth of God, and how um, that light flows through you and that people are drawn to you. So it says many will court your favor. And in another version, it says many will seek your face. And so people are going to um, be drawn to you and hope that um, they would be able to spend time with you because you're exuding from um, your own spirit, the joy of the Lord. And and that's not to say, so I, I just got done with a retreat. Um, it was really a lot of fun. I did a pastors and spouses retreat in the Bay Area. And we talked a lot about emotions and people are always saying, you know, you're, you're, saying that emotions are bad. And I'm not saying that emotions are bad. It's just that they're out of control. And a lot of times we decide things based on how we feel about them rather than what is best or good or right or biblical or what God has told us to do. And I had this other um, booklet that I was going through that actually says, how when was uh, the last time God told you to do something and you didn't do it? Um, and do we not do things because we're afraid, because we think we're going to be stupid? You know, really looking at... Um, the reasons why we don't obey God and and a lot of times it's because of emotions and we're afraid and so if we actually so in in the in the conversations about why we have emotions why do we have emotions about certain things and then be able to say can we lean into what God has asked us to do even though it might not feel right even though we might be afraid and the sermon yesterday at the church that I went to talked about the 23rd psalm about even though I go through the valley of the shadow of the death, I'm not afraid because you're with me, that God is with us everywhere. And can even though when we don't feel him and and it's not fun and exciting, can we know that he's walking with us and um, and be aware that we don't have to be afraid. We can be confident in our relationship with him while we go through a valley. And so... When we when we walk with confidence, people are attracted to that. They're attracted to that um, confidence that you have in God during the hard times. So recently I was asked to speak at the Christian Business Alliance because I had been through a lot this past year. And they said, we want someone to come and speak and talk about what it's like to um, make it through with a good attitude. And and there's t there's times when I'm by myself and I'm thinking, you know what, I don't, I don't know if I have a really great attitude all the time. Um and, and yet I, I, and there's times when I'm questioning like, okay, God, where are you? You know, I, I don't feel you. I don't see you. Where, where's your power? Um, but that doesn't mean that he's not here. And, and can I walk in that faith? And so one of the things I said over the weekend too, is that if we have to have proof, then there, there's, we, we don't have faith. If we're, if we're asking for proof, just like they, the disciples did, um, they're like, show us a sign, show us some proof. How do we know? And that if we have to have proof, then we're really not walking in faith. And so um, I really enjoyed I, I really enjoy working with so many different people. So over the weekend, I got to meet with pastors all the way from the South Bay, South San Francisco Bay, all the way to the Oregon border. And, and I told them when I started, I'm talking to you as, as humans, as people. We're all people and we all have stuff. And we all have things that people have said or done and experiences that we've had both good and bad. And, and um, to be able to sit in a room with them and talk about the reality of life and, and, um, and the joy of the Lord. And so the, 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 
the topic was uh, the invitation of Christ. And the invitation is to go play. Let's go play. So if Christ held his hand out to you and said, let's go play. You know, how would you respond to that? And, um, and that, and, and he's inviting us, he's inviting us to be a part of, of sharing his mystery. He's inviting us to, uh, share in part of his uh, miracles. He's inviting us to a deeper walk, to a joyful heart, to salvation and forgiveness. He invites us to so much and, and, and what a difference it is to invite others into what we've already experienced. And, and I really, I just, I enjoy it so much. I, I, I have such a, um, I, I can't, I can't explain, I, even with a life coaching, it's, it's, um, being able to walk alongside people as they're journeying through their experiences of, of watching, um, their call in their life, uh, come to fruition, whether it's actually in ministry or is it just using their natural talents and gifts that God has given them and, um, and allowing those to flourish. And so the, um, the three things that, that, um, I used to have a ministry wall, I should probably put it back up, ministry wall at my house, um, the three things that I would say over and over and over again that I wanted everybody to learn is that you are uniquely and eternally valuable to God. Evil always lies, and you can choose to believe. You can choose to believe truth. And so w- w- people will say, I, I, don't, I, can't, I just can't believe that. Well, you can. You have to make a choice. It might not feel true, and that's where everybody gets hung up. I won't believe it till I feel it, until I either see it or it feels true to me. And to be able to say, I am uniquely designed by God and eternally valuable to him. So forever, he, he made me unique on purpose and, and to enjoy his life with him uh, and it, forever. When I go to heaven, it's going to be forever. And, and evil always lies. The enemy wants you to not believe that. He desperately wants you to, to just reject truth and, and to understand that the enemy is spending a lot of time going over board trying to keep you from believing what is true about you and what is true about God. And I talk often about our our perception of God. Is it a healthy, well-rounded perception of God? Do we know God for all of his totality rather than parts and pieces that actually interfere with our ability to have a healthy view of self? And then the final thing is choosing to believe. I get to choose. I get to choose what I believe. Every moment of every day, there's a choice involved. And, and I can either choose that, that God loves me. I can choose that he has forgiven me. I've asked for forgiveness. I understand what Jesus did, that, that, that Jesus' death actually was effective for my forgiveness, and that he is alive today. And, and the joy of, of, that, of seeing Jesus is alive. Um, and so I, I should have brought that picture here with me. There was a picture of Jesus smiling, and I think you can see that on my main Facebook page. And... And it's like Jesus is alive, and this is the Jesus that we serve. And he's smiling, he's excited about what you're doing, where you're going, and, and, um, and the growth that you've already experienced. And when you spend time with God and you, and you thank him for what he's done, he smiles at you. And, and to have had that picture to show these pastors and, and their spouses um, it was just so incredible to watch them smile. When I think, you know, when Jesus was standing telling Peter, come out of the boat, and he stepped out of the boat. Jesus is smiling. He's like, yes, yes, Peter. Yes, that's fabulous. And so I hope that for the rest of the day and into, into the days ahead that you can imagine, you know, the smiling Jesus that's alive and wanting you to join with him in, in the mysteries of the faith and that it will bring you some peace and some laughter as well. And may God bless you in all that you do. Talk to you later.